Hello everybody and welcome along to today's webinar on what's new in version 28.02 for Sage 50 Cloud Payroll. My name's Calvin and I will be your host and presenter for today. And I'm joined by Duncan who'll be on hand to answer any questions that you might have. So the contents of today's session, we're gonna start off with a few install top tips. So some tips for installing your update. Now the update is mandatory now, um, so many of you may have already done it um, or you'll be receiving a prompt when you next open the program. Um, so we will just run through those top tips fairly quickly um, in the knowledge that some of you might have already installed it. Next, we'll look into the national insurance changes. So what is changing and where can you find this in the program after you've installed the update? And then we're going to move into directors national insurance as well. So what's going to be happening for directors with these national insurance changes? So there are a couple of different scenarios that we'll be running through specifically for directors. Now that is the main body of the reason for the update. Um, so we'll be covering off that. We're going to end the session with a little bit of a quiz. So a bit of engagement for you all to get involved in if you wish. Um, so we'll be running three different polls uh, with three different questions um, to see how you enjoy that. Then at the end, we will run through the further support you have available and finalize any questions for the remaining time of the uh, half an hour. So let's get into it now that we've covered off what we're running through and we'll start with the first section, which is install top tips. So we've got a couple of top tips listed here, um, as well as a link at the bottom to download the update manually if you haven't received the prompt yet. So the first one is to optimize your data. Now this can be done post install as well. So as I mentioned, a few of you may have already installed the update. So the optimizing your data can be done before and after you've done the install. And what the optimizing does is it just reduces the size of the data itself um, and tidies it all up in the background. So it just means it's nice and easier to upgrade that data when you've done your install. The next thing to do is check your program directory. So this is where the program is installed on your computer. So when you, whenever you install an update, um, and this goes for year end, et cetera. So if you're installing an update uh, at any time, the install will recognize that you already have a copy of Sage 50 Cloud Payroll installed, and it will ask you if this is the correct copy with a path to the program directory shown. So making note of the program directory just means that you definitely know that it's upgrading the right version and it hasn't recognized anything else uh, incorrectly. The next two are very, very important. Um, so we can't recommend this enough. And the first one, is to run install as full administrator. So when you are installing the program or the update, please run that installer as full administrator. And what we mean by full administrator is the access rights that you have when it comes to logging into your computer. So this is not logging into payroll or the program itself, but when you turn on your PC um, or laptop and you log into it, um, that login needs to have full administration rights so that it can install and update files and folders within the computer um, without any hindrances. Now to do this, once you've downloaded the update, right click on the icon um, for the installer that you've downloaded and select run as administrator. The next one is to open the program after you've installed it as full admin. Again, same scenario, right click on the icon and then select run as administrator. And when you do this, if you get a message and it's asking for a password, this is a bit of an indication to say that you don't have the full admin administration rights and you need to go and get that password from your admin. Now, if you need to check for admin rights, uh, it's worth consulting your IT department or IT team or individual, if it's a single person who has set up the computers in the first place, they will know um, whether you have admin rights or not and will be able to grant them to you as well. So there's two very important top tips and that avoids a lot of issues um, that we see. So it's not only uh, a recommended tip, but can also be a bit of a troubleshooting step as well, should you encounter any errors. And finally, if you're installing on a network, please ensure that all connected installs are updated. 
So when in network installations is a multitude of programs all installed on different PCs, they're all connected to the same set of data. So when you install one, it upgrades that data that all the others are connected to. So that means if the others are not updated, you will not be able to log in on that particular install. So if you have a network installation set up, please ensure that anyone who is connected to that set of data all installs the update at the same time, if possible. Okay, next, we're gonna have a look at the national insurance changes. So this is the reason for the update. Um, so this is all that's different for this particular update. And that is because of the announcement that was made um, just prior to year end. So what's changing? So from the 6th of July, the national insurance threshold increases by £3,000, which means employees must earn £12,570 per year before paying any national insurance. As I mentioned, the update is going to include these changes for you, which means there's going to be nothing different to do when processing once you've done your install. Now, I'll highlight those changes. We've got a couple of screenshots here, but I'm going to delve into the program after as well and show you where to go to find these. But you can see there in the top left, we've got a screenshot from the legislation settings that has the date set as the 6th of the 4th. So when are these rates effective from? And you'll see there we've highlighted the primary threshold, which is the one that's changing. And then in the bottom right, in the drop down, you can see we've changed the date to the 6th of July, which is when they come into effect. And there you can see that the primary threshold has upped to the £12,507 on the annual column. Now, what this means is when your process date is set as either the 6th of July or after, the program will automatically start using the rates in the bottom right, or the thresholds, should I say, the thresholds in the bottom right. Um, so the program will do this completely automatically for you. So as I mentioned, absolutely nothing different for you to do when it comes to processing. So all you'll be doing is installing your update and you'll be good to go. So I promised earlier that we'll be showing you in the program where to go and find these changes um, and have a look at the new thresholds. So what we'll do now is let's just pull up our Sage 50 Cloud payroll program. Then we're going to go to company in the bottom left here. And then in the top left, you'll see there is legislation. So this is your legislation settings. So this is where we need to go to check. Now, you wouldn't be changing or amending anything in here. Um, but if you'd like to have a look and just check for yourself, then you can go here. And then we're going to go to the National Insurance tab. So here you'll see we currently, because our process date is set as the 16th of June, so today's date, you'll see that the National Insurance bandwidth and effective from are sitting at the 6th of April. Now what this means is you'll see the primary threshold just here, if you can see my mouse is at the older rate or the original rate of 9,880. But if I go ahead and drop down and select the 6th of July, you'll see there then we have the primary threshold line. So if I just get my mouse and hover it over here, that's the wrong one. We'll get into that one in a minute. Um, just the one above it. Primary threshold is now the 12,570 pounds as is the new rates from the 6th of July. And that's it, so that's all there is to do. So that's where you need to go and find threshold changes if you're ever curious or if anyone ever questions it. So those are the national insurance changes um, that are occurring. And that is the reason, like I said, for the change, uh, the update to occur. Next, we'll have a look at our director's national insurance. So for director's national insurance, there's two ways that director's NI is calculated. Neither are incorrect, and it is personal choice on which way um, you choose to do it. The first one being the annual basis method. So that used to be known as the director method. The second one being the pro rata method. Now we're going to jump into the program a little later on and I'll demonstrate where to go to check uh, which director method you are using for your directors. But when it comes to the national insurance, any directors um, are going to have a separate primary threshold for an annual basis calculations. 
So you'll see that I hovered over that line by accident previously. Um, so directors are having their very own threshold. Um, and we'll get into the reasons for this in a moment. But any directors on pro rata method, so that's the old table method, will be impacted when a recalculation occurs in either month 12 or if and when the director decides to leave. So if the director leaves mid tax year, program will then automatically recalculate the national insurance using the annual thresholds. So pro rata method treats a director similar to an employee for the first 11 months of the year. Then in month 12, when it comes to your year end, it recalculates national insurance using the annual thresholds, which is why they'll be only impacted when that recalculation occurs. Directors on annual basis method, however, will be impacted as soon as the update is installed. So it's not going to wait for the 6th of July. Those changes are gonna impact you as soon as they are installed. Now, the reason for this is directors on annual basis method do use the annual thresholds uh, immediately. The, the reason again for this is based on what HMRC's uh, guidelines are. Because they're using the annual thresholds, um, and this is the reason for having a separate director primary threshold, this has been prorated to factor in the first three months that are at the lower rate, and then the remaining nine months at the higher rate, hence why they have their own line. And this is also why those directors are impacted immediately. Just to highlight that, um, we are gonna dive into the legislation settings and just show you there. So we'll, we'll jump into the program and I'll show you these um, in a moment, but just to quickly give you the overview. There you can see the legislation settings. And if you've got um, a keen eye, you'll see that we've highlighted the pr director's primary threshold. And you'll notice there that it is 11,908 rather than the 12,570. As I mentioned, that is to factor in the first three months where the threshold was slightly lower, so they are not underpaying national insurance for the entire tax year. Again, more information, there is uh, a link to the guide on the handout. So if you are downloading that, um, you'll be able to see that there. Again, just to show you, I'll reiterate the fact that when you install version 28.02, any directors on the uh, annual basis calculation will be impacted immediately. We've got a couple of pay slips here for our director. So we've got one where it was version 28.01. They've been paid the same amount and they're in the same period. You can see there in version 28.01, there is a national insurance amount of 15 pounds and 90 pence. But in the pay slip for version 28.02, again, exactly the same period and exactly the same amount of pay you'll see that there is no national insurance to be charged. Now, as I mentioned, that is due to those changes in the legislation settings um, coming into effect immediately. What does that mean? Um, nothing much, really, it is correct. Um, so don't worry too much if you start to see um, any directors having national insurance refunds in the next period, potentially. Um, so it all depends on obviously how much they've been paid, uh, both annually and for that period. So this isn't gonna be for everybody, but you might see some slight differences when it comes to the first pay after you've done the update. Don't worry though, it will calculate itself correct over the course of the tax year, so there's nothing to do when it's changing. But be aware, that if you are updating before you have updated records, and after you've already calculated the pay and maybe ran the pay slips or the reports, that once you might need to go back and just double check any directors um, to make sure that their pay slip has either remained the same or if it has changed you might just need to rerun that as well so it's recommended if possible you can um, just go ahead and update that update the program after you have updated records but if it's not possible just be aware you may need to go and rerun some reports so as I've mentioned, I'm gonna jump into the program now, um, but a quick note on this, again, if you're having to correct the director as well, just be aware that if you're correcting any periods, 
And this is only if you have to make a correction. So there's no need to do this um, for any other reason. But just be aware when you're reprocessing for that correction, there may be some slight discrepancies on the national insurance. Again, though, don't worry, it will work out correct over the course of the tax year as well. So it's just an awareness piece. Um, if you do start to see some changes for directors and the national insurance amounts, this is the reason why. OK, so let's dive into the program now for you and we'll show you um, firstly where the director's primary threshold is. And I'll just show you how um, the reason, again, why it's sort of impacting anyone on an annual basis method. And then we'll jump into an employee record and I'll show you how to check where to find um, what kind of method your directors are on. And remember, there's no right or wrong. You can be on pro rata or annual basis. It's completely down to either yourself or your director's choice, okay? Ultimately, at the end of the tax year, they all use the annual threshold anyway. Um, so it's personal preference and neither are incorrect. So here we are back in our legislation settings. Once again, you'll see there we have our primary threshold, but just underneath it, we've got this line for director's primary threshold. So you can see there we've got a differing amount. And what I'm gonna do, we've got it set as the 6th of July when that new legislation comes into play. But if I drop this down and go to the 6th of April, you'll see there that line for director's primary threshold is still there with the same amount as July. Now, as I mentioned, that amount has been uh, recalculated in order to factor in the first three months at this lower amount here. Um, so that's the reason for the impact. So that's where you can go to check. So everything you need to know about the national insurance changes can be found in this section for the legislation settings. And what we'll do now is if I just close out of there, we're gonna jump into our director's employee record and we'll have a look at where to go to check if they're a direct, what method they're on. So we're gonna open employee. Now, I like to right click and select open employee. Um, some people may double click, um, others might go to employee in the bottom left there. Again, personal preference on that one. So here we are in our director. So we're gonna head on over to the employment tab now. And then we'll see here we have a director status. So you can see here our director is currently on the annual basis. Now this is to highlight the changes that are coming in um, immediately um, for you. So you saw those pay slips. However, if you click on the drop down, little arrow here, you've got the three options, a so non-director if they're a, an employee, or you've got the director pro rata um, basis. It's not recommended to change your method in the middle of the tax period, and it can cause a lot of problems. So wait until the beginning of a new tax year in order to change it if you're needing to, or if you want to. Um, but like I said, as I mentioned, the changes there are going to be um, based on what the method is. And again, can't stress enough, neither is incorrect. So if you've got them set up as pro rata, then that's absolutely fine as well. So that's where you would go to check the director status. So that pretty much covers the changes for this particular update. Um, so now we're going to jump into a bit of a quiz. And we'll start um, getting a bit of engagement. Uh, so this is something new that we're trying out in our webinars, um, just to try and get you all involved just a little bit more. It is completely optional, um, so don't worry if you don't want to. And I must stress that the answers are completely anonymous as well. We will share the results, but the answers themselves, um, we won't see who has answered what. So we're going to start the poll now on the first question, which I'll bring up on the slide. So after installing the update, do I need to do any different processing? So I do need to process anything differently to implement the national insurance changes for employees. This is just a yes or a no. Do you need to process anything differently to implement the national insurance changes for employees? Used for employees as well. I should go for directors as well. So do you 
yes, you need to do something different or no, once you've done your update, can you just go ahead and process as you were? So we'll leave this open for about a minute. Um, let as many people get uh, answered as possible. Uh, as I mentioned, if you don't want to get involved, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, but hopefully it's something you enjoy. Um, and we might start implementing quizzes in more of our webinars going forward if we get the positive feedback. Okay, so we'll leave it on for about 10 more seconds just to speed things up. Okay, so we'll close that one off now and then we shall reveal um, the answers. So 99% of you all got it absolutely correct. The answer is no. No, you do not need to run, uh, do anything differently when it comes to processing uh, to implement the national insurance changes. So once you've done your update, just process as normal. So there's no need to roll back. There's no need to reprocess anything. There's no need to select drop downs or anything like that. It's just a simple case of as you were almost. So everything will be done automatically with those changes. Okay, so what we'll do now, let me just make sure I'm sharing my screen again and we'll move on to question two. So there's only three questions. So question two, where can I go to check what the new primary threshold for a director is? So where do we go in the program to check where what the new primary threshold for a director is? So we shall launch this one. So there's three options. We firstly got company, then legislation. So company being in the bottom left. Company, settings, or payroll in the bottom left and enter payments. So whereabouts in the program would you go in order to check what the new primary threshold for a director is? Of course, you can always go to the government website um, if you really wanted to, but you can just get this information directly from the program to save you having to pop in a Google search. And this is the place to go to. So again, we'll leave this on for roughly about a minute and we'll, uh, we'll reveal said answers. See the majority of you are getting this, but to choose your answer, you would just select the option and click submit, um, and then it comes through. Okay, that's been a minute, so we'll close this one off and share those results as well. So again, vast majority of you, and I say vast, the absolute majority, 98%, uh, uh, got it absolutely correct again. So it is company in the bottom left, then a legislation, and that brings up your legislation settings. And in there, you can check your national insurance thresholds. In there as well has all of the legislation information. So it's a very, very useful window in general. Okay, we'll move now on to the final question um, before we wrap up with the further support and any remaining questions you guys have. So question three, what is the new annual primary threshold for an employee whose national insurance category is C? So I will admit on this one, it is a little bit of a, a trick question to get you thinking a little bit. So we have three options. We've got 9,880, 11,908, or 12,570. So this is the new annual primary threshold for an employee whose national insurance category is C. So I'll try to be a little tricky with this one, get you thinking a bit, but yes, an employee's national insurance category is C. So what is their new annual primary threshold? We'll go through the reasons as why. It's a little bit of a trick question as well when we reveal the answers. So again, we'll give it a minute. So we've got about 10 seconds um, left. We might give it a little longer because they can say this one is one to get you uh, thinking a little bit. OK, 
Okay, we'll give it 10 more seconds and then we'll just, uh, we'll show you the answers there as well. Brilliant, right, we've got the majority of you voted, so uh, we'll close this off and I'll reveal the answers. We'll share what you've all said. So again, majority of you all got it correct again. So for an employee whose national insurance category is C, the new annual th primary threshold is 12,570. Now, the reason this was a bit of a trick question is that category part of it doesn't matter, it means nothing. Uh, when it comes to the thresholds. So the categories only affect what rate of national insurance an employee pays. So category C being employer only, for example. Um, so it doesn't matter in terms of the thresholds. So the thresholds will remain the same regardless of what category the employee or directors are on. And that pretty much wraps up the presentation. Um, I do want to just run through a couple of things before um, we go out and answer any remaining questions you've got. And that is the further support. So if you have any other questions uh, regarding anything, um, we have a vast array of resources available to you. So the first one being our Sage Help Centre. So here you can search about our knowledge base. So I did see a couple of questions about payslip comments. So if you'd like to know more about that, you can search for payslip comments in the knowledge base, and I know there's some wonderful guides on those as well. Uh, you've got support guides, so these are topical, so you can see them there. We've got pensions, online services, uh, processing, correcting mistakes, for example, uh, and many more. Um, the top six are listed, and then you can select view all the support hubs there to have a look at the various different support guides. Webinars, of course, so we do run a weekly webinar every uh, Thursday at two o'clock. Um, well, the vast majority of Thursdays, there are a couple uh, where holidays play a part and um, bank holidays, etc. that we've just had. Um, but yes, we do run webinars regularly Thursdays, two o'clock. Um, so have a look at the webinar section in the Help Centre, see if there's any topics you want to come along and have a watch of. Various videos, and of course, if you need to get in touch with us, you can find that through the Help Centre too. And lastly, Sage University. So sageu.com. If you head on over to sageu.com, uh, you can have a library of e-learning, Sage certifications, uh, and bite-sized learning as well. So if you'd like to um, improve upon your Sage payroll knowledge, then head on over to Sageu. It's, a lot of it's free of charge. In fact, the majority of it's all free, and it can be done in your own time at your own place as well. So that wraps up the session fully. We'll spend a couple of minutes and realize we've hit the half an hour mark, um, but it will spend a little couple of minutes if you've got any remaining questions um, to get them answered. Uh, in the meantime, if you are leaving us now, it's been an absolute pleasure to see so many people uh, attend today. I uh, really like seeing the, the high numbers and I really hope you've got something out of it today. Um, when you do leave the session, whether that be now or a little bit later, you will be presented with um, a survey. It would mean a lot to both myself and Duncan if you spent just that little bit of time filling that in. Um, we can't improve these sessions um, or try new things, uh, make them as best as we possibly can without your feedback. Um, so when we do try new things like the quiz, for example, it's always good to hear what your thoughts are um, as well. So if you could spend that little bit of time filling that in, it would mean quite a lot. I'm going to go and mute now just for a couple of minutes while we get uh, any remaining questions answered, or if you have any, get them in now, and I'll be back uh, in a couple of minutes to say our final goodbyes. Thank you for now. Okay, so I can see that we have managed to get through all of the questions uh, and there hasn't been any coming through for a little while now. So we'll wrap that up. Um, so again, a big thank you to everybody who's attended um, and has stuck around till the end as well. Um, so for you guys, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you got a little bit um, from this as well. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you're all looking after yourselves um, out there, still staying safe, of course, as well. Um, and we'll hopefully see you in the next one. So thanks for watching.